coming in hot, Titi. Dude, go, go like baby. go like this again, bro. Look at us—we're like two freaking morons. I think the gym's over that. Way. <laughs> Dude, you're looking good, man. That goatee, <laughs> the, the 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 brown is starting to fade nice. Tight, into the... <laughs> looks tight, looks tight, doesn't it? Look yesterday, yesterday, you look like you know when like. When you, you, you when you're five year old and you, you you paint on like the the goatee when they when they dress up as an adult for Halloween it looks good now it looks perfect now. <laughs> hey you're back at the scene of the crime isn't this where the cops assaulted Dude, you <laughs> yeah right right over there bro is the uh, flagpole where the cop tried to take me down but I'm, I, there's still a chance because I'm right by the front door in a different position but at least I can see the cops coming this time I can let them know I'm doing a podcast with you. same guy. <laughs> Hey, guy for three weeks ago. hey, by the way, before we get started, man, Sarah, this yeah. is the last chemo day. That's where you're at right now. We're, ring, we're ringing the bell today, brother. We're ringing yeah. The, we're oh, ringing the bell. do you ring the bell? Saying, I love when they see that. Yeah, yeah. Did you ring the bell? They, were, they didn't do the bell thing back in my day. <laughs> it's new. It's new. Yeah, it's kind yeah, of a, yeah, it's kind of in the last few years. Yeah. I love it, though. I love when I do it yeah. and all the people clap for, oh, that's going to, yeah, you're going to cry like yeah. a little baby, aren't you? You're going to cry. Oh, a 100% I'm going to cry. Everybody knows oh, Case yeah, cries. Yeah. Go look at Casey's uh, <laughs> Reds Hall of Fame <laughs> speech. <laughs> hey, hey, you know, real men cry, by the way. You got that right, buddy. I'm going to show some emotion, okay? I, you know, that's the bottom line. Yeah. Warriors, warriors. 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 Um, all right, hey. Um, dude, I, dude yeah. really quick, speaking of the Reds Hall of Fame, I was up there last night, man. I went up to the Reds Hall of Fame and gave a speech to this, the Rights Society um, little group of guys and you know, Rick Walls, who runs the Hall of Fame there, brings in guys to talk. So I was totally honored to be there, man. It was really, really yeah. cool to be back there. And then I, then I drove back last night, dude. I don't know about you, but, like, as I get older, dude, narcolepsy sets in. So <laughs> I uh, <laughs> about 1 in the morning, what I did was I, my neighbor, this guy, great kid, his name is Josh. He's from Australia. I'm like, hey, bro, you need to come with me. I'll, I'll pay you to drive to drive with me to, to Cincy. So Last night, about two hours into the ride, I was like, here you go, bro. Take over. This is why I'm paying you the big bucks. I need you. And I'm just sawing logs in the passion. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Dude, that is not easy, man. Driving, I hate, I hate driving at night. I hate it. I'm not, my eyes don't work well these days yeah, as I get too. older. Yeah. yeah, me too. And then you then you go listen to a po- Don't listen to podcasts. You, know, you got to blast ACDC. Oh, yeah. And then put your head out the window. When the freaking, you know, <laughs> yeah, like whatever, you know, Throw your head down the window. And you're just like. Yeah. Should be all day. No. <laughs> you're driving like uh what's his name? What's that movie? Jim Carrey when he's out the window and uh yeah, Ace Ventura. Exactly. Ace Ventura, yeah. <laughs> um hey today's brought to you by the number twelve, two things. Walker twelve game hit streak, Razor twelve and oh. Holy yeah. stromboli, man. Dude, isn't that great? I mean, these are two things we've been talking about. Obviously twelve because they both played twelve games, but Walker stands alone at that to start a career at twelve games. This kid's an absolute stud. And the Rays being 12 and 0, like I, I know, like people say, oh, they're, they're not playing that great of teams. It doesn't matter. It's the big leagues. It's so hard to sweep teams. 12 and 0, hats off to you to the Rays with yeah. the ball they're playing. So. Hats, hats on to the Boston Red Sox, who are now seven games out. They're five and seven. Yeah, that's not, that's not a good 12, that's not 12 a good games game. into the season, you're seven games out. <laughs> that's yeah, cool. Well, honestly, because the Rays are, the Rays are right. so hot, but yeah. it's not a. You don't want to be seven games out to start this thing. And, dude, it, it turns out the East were really good again. Mm-hmm. The Blue Jays walked it off last night. Eight they got a four. good team. Kiermaier and Dalton Varsho, Dalton Varsho, they make that lineup a lot better, mm-hmm. a lot deeper, a lot of good players, a lot of good guys in that clubhouse. Gosman pitched well. The pitching's well. So they're a good team. The Yankees are good. Mm-hmm. The Orioles are good. Mm-hmm. Red Sox are going to have their their, uh, their, their have it cut out for them in the uh, East this year, man. There's some good clubs top to bottom. Yeah. Hey, what? Did I, I wouldn't even talk about this before, but I'm going to ask you: How legit is Milwaukee? Do you think they're real legit? Eight and four. They're the real deal, man. They are the so real too. deal. They're swinging the bats right now, and that was a big thing last year. Was they didn't swing it that well? This year they're swinging it, and the pitching, you know, Burns you know, at, a, at a great start, you know, uh, last night or the night before. And uh, they just got great pitching. So, yeah, they're, they're the real deal. Yeah. Hey, one other thing, another th- clap. Extension for Hap. We love him. You're a buddy of his. He was on our show. Let's By go. the way, hey, if you haven't if you haven't listened to our show with Ian Hap, go listen to it. Y- you'll learn so much about how great of a guy this guy is and how how, how hard he works at his craft. And, I mean, that's, that's an easy that's an easy sign. I think it's a great move by them. Dude, such a great guy. I've known Happer since he was in high school. We used to hit right. together when he was 17 years old. Like, such a great dude. 
But it's a great sign for the Cubs, man. This guy is get, only getting better, more consistent with his play. Uh, you know, it's a what a three year deal, sixty one million. Yep. Uh, which I was joking around with him because um, Jim Tomey, Hap, and Rizzo and I every year go to that. You know, we, we go to dinner at uh, State Forty Four, and it, since COVID, we, we it's been tough to get together. But um, I just text Hap this morning. I say, hey, bro, congrats on the contract. State Forty Four on you for the rest of the times we go. <laughs> yeah. I, he's like, you got it, dude. He's making because he's making more than Riz now. He's making more than Tommy, oh. and no doubt more than me. We don't even get paid for this podcast. No <laughs> doubt more than me. That's really good. <laughs> I mean, it's a smart. First of all, like he's the, the comps as far as like salaries. Like Ben Intendi got five years, seventy five million. Conforto got thirty six million guaranteed. It looks like here, and conditional options. Like he's 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 been too consistent. Like there's nothing wrong with this. I have nothing negative to say about this deal. Plus, wow, a great, great sign. Dude. Great sign. Congrats, Happer. Good, for, good for the Cubs. Good for Ian Happ. Let's go. Yeah. Now let's keep 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 it moving with good guys. We like Pete Alonso's a good guy, right? Dude, Pete Alonso. That's the fun. The, the, the greatest thing about Pete Alonso is it's just kind of like stealth. You know, we we were talking about this earlier. I did a thing, a breakdown at MLB Network a couple weeks ago. I said when we did the top 100 players, I said, oh, Pete Alonso, the quietest 40 homers and 131 RBI. Last year, like, oh, yeah, 40 homers, 131 stakes, dude. Since 2019, he leads the league. You know, even when we're talking Aaron Judge, all yep. those are great players. Mike leads baseball in RBIs and home runs since 2019. Yeah. And now he is leading, leading the league again in home runs, just yeah. quietly doing what he does, man. It's not sexy, but it's yeah. incredible. It gets it done. One, two, three, four. This is his fifth season, 220. Pain in the ass, freaking COVID. That doesn't really count as much. Still had a really great year there, but he's got a he's got he's got a year where he had fifty three homers. Last year he had a hundred and thirty one RBIs. John, I know the I know, it's for, right, just, yeah, for, I know. it's unbelievable. Yeah. You know, one thirty one. It's amazing, dude. Like, it's we, and and don't you feel like we're like, oh, no one was really, no one was really. Oh. It's, it's incredible, like. Right. You and know? and a good hitter. Like think about it. last year, he had forty homers. He had a hundred and sixty-two hits. You don't really. What are we saying? What's what's Max Muncy Muncy doing right now? Compare the two types of hitters. They are like you might be able to hit homers, but this guy's a good hitter. He's a good average hitter. Yeah, yeah. And Muncy, you know, Muncy's hitting some home runs against the Giants when he plays them. But you know, listen, not getting the not getting the hits that he is. No, not at all. Absolutely not. All right. One other guy I want to talk about is uh, Luis. How do you pronounce his name? Arise. 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 He yeah, is. Luis Arise. He is definitely arising. He's a he's a rising a rising star. Oh, that's your next breakdown tape. Put it on the front. A rising star. Yeah, I'm yes. sure D Rose used that or something. Yeah. Like MLB Central or something. That's hey man, Luis Arise. Yeah. Don't forget, last year Luis Luis Arise won the batting title for the Minnesota Twins. Guy was an absolute stud. One of the best hitters in the game. Um, had a great WBC too. Was trading to the Marlins. It was a big tra- offseason trade for Pablo Lopez. The Twins needed starting pitching. Uh, Arise. Uh, the, the Marlins needed lineup uh, help, and Arise goes in as one of the best hitters in baseball. It's a great trade for both teams because you know the Twins. Lopez has been doing well there already, and Arise. Man, this guy rakes. Yeah, this guy he rakes. Does rake. Great approach. Puts the ball in play. He's a line gap to gap line to line guy. Yeah, like you know, uh, uh, just an old school. A, a comp I think of right away. Do you remember Jose Bidro? Yes. Back with the Expos? Yes. Second baseman that could rake, dude. Bidro would lead the league in doubles, hit over 300 every year. You know, Luis, Luis Arise reminds me a lot of Jose Bidro. You know who he kind of reminds me of, too, the kind of way he plays? Oh, man, I'm forgetting his name. That those real, that really good 2005 uh, Marlins team, the second baseman. He, oh, Luis Castillo. Yes, right? He had, yeah, he, he had yeah. a 36, 37-game hit streak. He almost, I think he almost won a batting title one year, too. Just, I think he might have, dude. Dude, I I, I take a thing about Luis Castillo, bro. That brings me back to the Double A, dude. Nineteen ninety seven. I'm with the I'm with the uh, Akron Arrows at the time. Now they're like the Akron Rubber Duckies or something. But the Akron Arrows, uh, the team for the Marlins that year, dude. Double A, Portland, Maine. Kevin Millar is at first. Luis Castillo is at second. Alex Gonzalez is at short. I want to say Mike Lowell's a third, maybe. No, maybe. No, Lowell's not a third, but they got another stud third baseman. Mm. Then they got a guy named Ryan Jackson in the outfield. Dempster's, Dempster's on the bump. Yeah. I think Beckett was there. I mean, like, they, 
the, the team was like literally a big Stacked. league team in double A. And yeah. I remember thinking, and then the next year they were all there, but then Castillo had an unbelievable career. But I was like, Hey, that's the Portland, Maine freaking double A team. That's now the Marlins, <laughs> yeah. you know, winning the world series in 2003. Yeah. Incredible. That's absolutely crazy. You just spit on a camera, by the way. Did you notice that when you were talking? Did I start? Did I? On the, oh, wait, where? Oh no, it's on gone. It's gone. No, it went underneath. Oh. <laughs> all right. Well, I had a spit. I was going to do. Let me get rid of one right yeah, here. Go for it. Okay, good. I'm back. I'm outside. You can get the bushes around. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I remember uh, <laughs> back to that. Back to those Marlins teams in in 05. Was it 05? No, it's 03. I'm sorry. I kept saying 05. 03 when they won it, when they beat the uh, Yankees. Yankees. I'll never forget. It. I was at ESPN and me and my buddy Derek Kamagan, we would stand there every day. You know, you go and you, you know, you're on the field. We're just kind of pregame yeah. stuff going on. Dude, I we would just stand there and stare at Gonzalez and Castillo turning double plays like pregame, it was like it was like watching like two Aussie Smiths. We they were so good up the middle of that team because didn't they have Pierre in center who was a great center fielder? Oh yeah, Juan Pierre could track it down. They were they were loaded, man. They were loaded. We do one thing I remember back about Florida really quick, just a side note story. Dude, you go down to Florida to play the Marlins. They'd be in that big stadium, whatever, where they played. I think. I, I don't know who even played there. I was it a football stadium? Yeah, it was Joe Robbie. Wasn't that the yeah, Joe Robbie. Yeah, 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 Joe Robbie. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. So Joe Robbie, you go there, dude. It was so freaking hot. And it would rain every day. So it'd be so hot, but it would rain every day at four o'clock, four thirty or five. Our our batting practice would get banged every time. Ugh. So we go into Florida, freaking sunny skies and nine thousand degrees. <laughs> They're like, hey, no BP guys uh, in the cages because it's going to be a monsoon rain from uh, four thirty to five thirty. Like uh, it would bang BP every day. It was incredible. Did you did you have a problem? With, like, did that screw you up when you couldn't take BP, or did it not bother you? Uh, no, sometimes I liked it because you hmm. know it's so many games, dude, every single day. So if you're in the cage, sometimes you get in, you get out, you're done. You know what I mean? You kind of do your thing. Sometimes when you're out of batting practice, it's a, it's a whole ordeal because. You're getting a million ground balls. You know what I mean? You're doing all your whole stuff. So, like, yeah, sometimes when you they, they would bang BP, you're like, all right, that's good. Let's do it in the cages. Yeah. Did they – they, nobody took infield before. Like, were you past the time when they stopped taking infield before games? Uh, They still took it. But not you guys. Uh, no, we still took it sometimes. Especially Bob Moon. When Bob Moon was the manager, he we took infield a lot with him. Man, that was my favorite thing. And, like, in high school and college, you get to see – you know, you would see there and everybody would be showing off. You know, each team takes infield before the game and you're standing there. You're trying to figure out how's the right fielder's arm. You know, yeah, yeah. Oh, the that's... coach is like locked in. He's like, look at the right fielder. Look at the – catch their arms. Yeah. And if you're talking to your buddy like, hey, dude, what you do at school? Would you call your girlfriend like, hey, dude, watch the arms in right field, center field, left field. Oh, and my God. Get on. They want to kill you. The coach would want to kill you if you weren't watching. Ah, I remember – oh, so my, my senior year, this was really cool. Senior year in high school, you know, my, my coach, Mike Piancos, my, my high school – Baseball coach just got abducted. Abducted. <laughs> just got inducted. <laughs> Dude, Mike, Mike, if you need help and you're abducted, let us know where you're at. No. We'll the authority. No, I think he uh, inducted. I believe in the New York uh, Baseball Hall of Fame. He, I mean, we won every. He wins every year. By the way, I've been in his basement. He has like the plaques from every championship. I don't know. He's got to like make an extension. He wins. They win every year. Shaman High School. I'm on Long, Long Island. Props. But my senior year, we we're going to play <clears throat> Kellenberg. It was our rival high school. And uh, the other good center fielder in the league was, uh, I'm forgetting his name, but he was great. But he played center fielder, center field. But Tim was, McMahon? Tim McMahon? No, not, no, Timmy was no. great. But Timmy went to a public school, so I didn't get to play against him. I played with him in the summers. But, so, uh, God, I'm forgetting his name. But he was a great center fielder, but he was also their best pitcher through in the 90s in high school. And our assistant coach, Jack Lyons, we had a, a – three game series with them and whoever was going to win this last game was going to win the division. So the assistant coach, Jack Lyons is a brilliant coach too, comes up to us before the game and this kid's going to be pitching. Now he had been playing center field for the other two days. Coach Lyons tracked every throw that he made in the first two days, every throw when they took infield, every throw he made during the game. And now he's starting game three and he, he and the coach goes, Hey guys, this dude has thrown 642 baseballs and now he's getting on a mound to face us. And we were all just like, oh my God, that's <laughs> the coolest thing. And we, we wound up beating him in that game. And I just remember being like, wow, that's that's in-depth thinking by that coach. 
I don't know. Stupid story. I love it, dude. Back, back then, too, that was like that was the analytics right there. Back then, too, yeah. that was the analytics. Like, that was the, the analytics. The pitch count. Yeah. The pitch count. That dude, was- I remember, that reminds me. One, one, one more quick story. Yeah. It reminds me of Jim Leland. We're facing Randy Johnson, 2006 Yankees. And, we, you know, we're go- Don Slott's going over the hitters' meetings. We're all in there. Me, Magni Ordonia, Craig Monroe, Curtis Granderson. You know, we're locked into the, uh, into the meeting. And then Leland pops in. You know, a heater going. He's like, all right, man. He like just. He just like takes over the meeting. Like, you know, we're going through, hey, look at this. All right, man. He goes, this isn't the Randy Johnson from Arizona. He goes, this guy's going to give you a few pitches to hit tonight. And when you do, let's do it. Let's get him out of there. And let's get this series wrapped up here soon. And he walked out. I swear to God, it changed the whole dynamic of the feeling. Like, okay, we knew we were facing Randy Johnson. Yeah. Then you put it into perspective that it's not the Randy Johnson from Arizona. It's Randy Johnson in New York that was, you know, throwing 88 to 92. It was a little different. Let's go get this guy. Yeah. I don't know, man. Something like when your coach That's saying really cool. that about yeah. he's throwing this many bullets in his arm, he's not as fresh as you think. Let's go get him. It's just something flips him. It's such a mental game. Right. Any little subtlety that you can do as a coach yeah. to put something positive in your in your players' minds, that could be the difference between one or two hits of winning a ball game. So I just thought that was awesome. I like, love that. It was the genius of Leland, man. He was so great at that stuff. I love that. Hey, I got a question for you. You don't hear about this anymore because everybody just swings whenever they swing. Did you ever play with like a leadoff hitter who was so good at being like, like who would come back to dugout or you know? Remember, leadoff hitters it used to be like see as many pitches that you can, whether you get on or not. Come back to the dugout. His changeup doesn't look great today. <laughs> that curveball looks really right. good. Did you ever play with guys like that? Uh, there was a, there was definitely a few guys like that. I can remember Ryan Ryan Friel with the uh, with the Reds. He was a you know a good leadoff guy. Grandy, I think, led off when we were with the uh, Tigers. Mm-hmm. Um, good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Whenever you could get good information of what, what, what are the, what are the, um, you know, what are the shapes? What are the shapes of the pitches look like? What's the, what's the curveball look like? What's the shape? Is it twelve six? Is it more like a slider? You know, I would say is a slur. How's the slider look? Does he have a changeup that fades? Is his fastball run? Anything you could get before that first at bat from the, from that from that leadoff guy or those that number two guy that was in front of you, man, it, it was nothing better than that. And also too. For a left-handed hitter like me, I was always looking at the lefties. Mm. This guy pitching them is, you know, because how he pitches those other lefties is probably going to be similar to how he pitches me. Right. So always paying attention to make sure, like, as soon as that game starts, I got to be locked into what's going on of the nuances because I could pick up one thing about what he's doing with two strikes or how he's trying to get ahead or where he, when he gets behind, where is he going, what part of the what quadrant of the plate, anything to help me, you know. Give me an advantage uh, in, the, in my at bats. Were you a film guy? Did you watch a lot of film or not really? You know what? I, I was a film guy, but I was a I was a positive film guy. Like we talked about Ryan Harrison, mm. Bill Harrison. Bill Harrison used to tell me my, who was my uh, I you know my vision coach, uh, but also like a mental performance coach too. He was big on like find your best swings, put it on a DVD back in the day. Yeah. And I what I used to do is when I, on the flights I used to run it in a loop, rocking, uh. rocking, left center, right center. So if I was struggling. Sometimes I wouldn't go and overanalyze my swing. I would look at my good swings and go, man, what was I doing here? Oh, man, look how deep I'm letting the ball travel. Look how I saw the ball well there. Oh, look at it. And all of a sudden, positivity. You know, we're, 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 yeah, we're, and we're also the visualization. Sometimes you're, a lot of times your brain doesn't know if it's real or not real, you know, if it's past or present. So when you're watching films of yourself dominating, your brain goes, man, you're an unbelievable hitter. I come in the next day, I'm like, let's get it on, man. I, I just watched 20 minutes. 30 minutes of myself just hitting bullets. Like, forget about me struggling right now. I'm ready to dominate tonight. Yeah, it's almost like remind yourself how good you are <laughs> rather than yeah, saying this is why I'm not good seriously. now. I love that. Yeah, then, then, then the fact that my back foot's not rotating good enough, uh, my hands aren't back, and my, my my front leg's not leg kicking enough. No, dude, like, get let's get visual and, like, start dominating yourself. Like I that. love that. Let's start dominating somebody. Hey, yeah. you got to get back in there. You're going to dominate the bell today, man. I'm let's so go, happy baby. for Sarah Tyler. I love her. I'm so excited. Time to ring the bell. I'm thinking about Rocky. I'm thinking about Rocky and uh, <laughs> and Apollo at the end of Rocky 3. He's like, you owe me one, man. You owe me one. All right, let's bring the, ring the bell. Ding, ding. You know? <laughs> ding, ding. <laughs> All right, bro. Awesome All right, day. All right, kids. You have a great rest of the day. Everybody out there, thanks for listening to, uh, to us today and all week, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.